Welcome to the Not in the Job Description podcast. I'm Scott McLaughlin. And I'm Chris Kiernan. No matter what type of job you've had, there were situations that happened to you during work that you couldn't wait to tell your friends about. We interview a variety of guests about some of their crazy stories from work, from entry-level food service industry jobs to doctors and attorneys. We will explore funny, gross, embarrassing, scary, and sometimes almost unbelievable stories that people have experienced while on the job. Keep in mind that our guests or the companies they work for may be masked in order to protect the innocent, or maybe even the guilty. On today's episode, we talk to Corey, who is a teacher for fifth grade students. Hi, Corey. Hey, Scott. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Corey, how's it going? Hey, Chris. How are you? Good, good. Yeah, Chris and I know Corey through a friend, and uh, we've we've known him for quite a few years now. But I'm always amazed. Number one, I mean, he, he what grade do you teach, Corey? Fifth grade. Yeah, so you teach fifth grade. And I couldn't imagine teaching fifth graders. To me, I think that maybe is on the cusp of some of the worst years to teach. Uh, once you hit middle school, don't they get kind of wild? Yeah, I always tell people that fifth grade is like right before they're like cocky and think they run the world. You know, just it's that age, it's that year right before that. They're still a little bit afraid of you. But as the years have gone by, not that much. That keeps shrinking. You know, used to be I'm six foot three. So usually a six foot three guy is usually taller than most fifth graders. Most, yeah. They can be intimidated, but that is shrinking every (laughs) year. Well, that that kind of brings me to my question because, again, I get a kick out of teachers. My father was a teacher, and I don't know how anyone listened to that guy. But I wanted to ask you, how long have you been doing this? So this year, it marks my 22nd year. Wow, 22nd year. Yep, 22nd year. I've done fifth grade every year but one, and I've been in the same school for 20 years. So that's kind of wild. You probably see people out and about now that are like 30 years old, and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember teaching them. So this year, this year I have a student of a st- – of, I have a daughter of a student that I had in fifth grade. So it's like your granddaughter. Well, (laughs) (laughs) no, it's not my granddaughter. (laughs) That would take, that would be a twisted turn on things, but. No, but I mean, you have to see a lot of different kids that you either know their, their families, or, I mean, you just said you probably taught some of their parents. Absolutely. So I live in a, a very small rural area. Um, The school population in grades K through 5 is 400 kids. Our high school of grades 9 through 12 is 400 kids. Wow. Very small community, very tight-knit. I'm heavily involved in Little League Baseball, uh, Little League Basketball, you know, and all the local sports. So majority of the kids that I teach, I do know their parents really well. I usually know most of the kids before they come to fifth grade because I've been involved with them in youth sports. So is there ever a time, because you know them so well and you know they're about to be in fifth grade, are you like, oh, hell no, I don't want that kid in my class. Let's ship him over to (laughs) Mrs. Jones' class or whatever. Absolutely. There has been (laughs) several times I've asked for that favor or I've gone to the principal and said, look, this is just not a good fit. And I'll give them, you know, like an example of what happened. Like kid was on my little league team and, you know, he didn't play. Everybody plays, but you know how it always goes. Someone's always upset that they didn't play enough or they didn't play right. the position they wanted. Or right. So I'm like, you know, it would probably be a better idea if they were in another class. And so that's been honored. So I'm, I'm you know, privileged to have had good leaders in our building for the most part. So that you get away with that crap? <laughs> yeah. <sir. laughs> One way of saying it, get away with it. So 400 but, people, I think um, – the school that Chris and I went to, like he went to a school down the street from mine pretty much. And I think the year we graduated, we had 400 people that didn't graduate from our class. <laughs> right. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so back to the bad kids or the kids that maybe aren't a good fit for you. Uh, uh, how often does that happen? Because I, I'll tell you what, I'll just fall on the sword here. When it comes to, uh, when it came to dealing with my kids in their school, I was kind of, out of it. I did not go to a lot of school functions. 
Um, I find out later that everyone made fun of me saying that I didn't know what school my kids went to. And for the most part, I knew what school. I didn't know their teachers, but um, my kids would get in trouble every now and then. Nothing big, but... I'll never forget going to a parent-teacher conference and having one of the teachers say to us about my son, Luke, hey, um, what motivates Luke? And my wife, Kim, and I, we look at each other. We're like, well, we were actually going to ask you because he, this kid does whatever he wants. <laughs> and she was like, wow, you know, I don't think he's disrespectful or anything, but sometimes he'll throw me for a loop. And we said, what do you mean? She said, well... I, I, I saw Luke just sitting at his desk and we were supposed to all be working. So I walked over to him and I said, Luke, I tapped on his, his worksheet and said, you need to do this. And he looked at me and said, okay. So a few minutes later, she looks at him and he's still just sitting there kind of daydreaming. And so she walked up to him and said, uh, Luke, if you don't do this, you're going to have to stay in with me at recess. And she said, he looked up at her and said, well, if that's what you feel like you have to do. He was in kindergarten. <laughs> and she goes, I don't think he was trying to be like smart about it, but that's scary. And I'm like, yeah, it is. Do you, do you have some kids where you're just like, oh my gosh, how, how can I get in this kid's head? Yeah. Um, you know, one advantage of teaching fifth grade is the kids have been in school many years. I mean, can be seen as an advantage. Sometimes that's a disadvantage, but usually by fifth grade, they're, you know, used to routines and there's things that have motivated them throughout the years that you know about by then, you know, you've learned more about the kids, the other teachers have, and they give you some ideas on how to motivate them. So that helps, but there's always, every, every year, there's always a kid or two, some years, three or four that just refuse to do the work. And over the years, the thing that's changed is now we have very little authority over holding things over their head. Like right. I can't take a recess from a kid. Oh yeah. I can't, right. we don't give detention. We don't, um, you know, we don't do in school suspensions, things like that. You know, the only thing that I can do is I can make kids walk laps at recess instead of having <laughs> a choice. Of kids. And you can imagine their reaction to that. Oh, whoop de doo I'll walk around the circle here for 10 laps. Oh, that's you know, funny. So. Now I have to ask you this because, you know, times have changed. When I was in school, when I screwed up, which was often, I was going to get a paddling from the vice principal or whoever it was going to be. And then they're going to call my parents who are going to double down by the time I get home. But I remember tides were starting to turn a little bit when I was younger. And I got into a fight with somebody once in middle school and I remember they called this kid's parents and the mom said, you're not touching my son. And I thought, oh my gosh, what is going on here? I thought maybe it was his sister or something acting like his mom. But do you see parents um, act in ways where you, you just can't believe it? I'm, I'm hoping you give me an answer since you're in a smaller community that everything's rosy. But I'm just curious, do you have some parental actions where you're thinking this isn't helping the kid? Oh, it, yeah. And and like I said, and. 22 years, it just keeps getting worse. Every parent thinks their kid is an angel. There's very few parents who can accept the fact that their kid made a mistake. And so the first thing when you call home to a parent is, what did the other kid do? Well, why did he do that? Oh, he probably did that because somebody did something to him. You know, it's always that. No matter what, I mean, I've had a kid just walk up and punch a kid in the face, and we have it on video, and the parent still thinks that it's not their fault. Wow. So, I mean, I always tell my personal kids, if a teacher or an adult said I did something wrong, I did something wrong. I never had a rebuttal. My mom <laughs> never let me have a rebuttal. I just got beat. And That's right. My <laughs> yeah. That was the end of it. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. uh, I, I can't, I'll guarantee you, if you asked my parents, do you think your kid was an angel? You couldn't get the sentence out before they were like, hell no, because <laughs> they, they kind of knew what was going on. My mom laughs at me every story I tell about kids I teach and my own kids. And she just snickers and laughs and said, you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. <laughs> so I guess I was bad, too. So. Well, in 22 years then, so there must be a time, maybe, um, I don't know, aside from the kid just walking up and punching the other kid in the face. But you, you probably have a story or two of just... 
um, some kids that were just, you couldn't even believe what you were witnessing or, or being a part of. Oh man, there's, there's so many, there's too many stories to actually, we don't have enough time. Right. I should have, I always joked around saying I should have kept the journal. By now I could have wrote a book and probably published a book of things that I've seen kids do. But um, just recently, just recently we're into this uh, restorative practices, uh, which kind of goes along with what Scott's saying. Like, you know, before he used to punish kids that they didn't do things. Now we do, it's called restorative practices. So kids have, say, like a, a crisis pass or a, um, you know, like free pass to go do something that they want to do. So kids can, they get adult coloring books or they get Play-Doh that they can go shape and play with. They can take a walk and things like that. So instead of punishing them, we like give them something to do like a stress ball or something. It's kind of the restorative thing. So I had a kid just recently, uh, within the last couple of years, that um, he was doing his work. Another kid was bothering him. He was about to – this was a kid who dropped the F-bomb regularly and didn't understand it was incorrect. He was like, oh, I can't say that. <laughs> like if I would say, you know, Johnny, get out your pencil. I don't have an F in pencil. <laughs> Excuse me? You say, I don't have an F in pencil. I'm like, do you hear what you're saying? And you just kind of look at me. I'm like, do you realize you can't talk like that here? Oh, I don't know. So, I mean, yeah, it's regular everyday language. But this is a kid who is supposed to, when he feels stressed, to be able to have a moment to go take a walk or, you know, color in his adult coloring book. But he decides, and this is, this is again, this is April Fool's Day. So he usually takes a walk. He did his work. He says, can I take a walk? Sure, go ahead. Take your walk. He said, can I walk a little farther today? Can I walk down to the principal's office and back? I'm like, sure, why not? So our school is kind of in an L shape. So there, you walk down the hallway, you take a, a right turn, and it goes down to the main entrance where the office is and the principal's office, and there's like a foyer there. Well, in that foyer, there's a public restroom. And he goes down into the public restroom, comes back. Well, about three minutes after he comes back, here comes a teacher walking behind him and said, Jason, just in the bathroom? I said, well, he just went for a walk. He said, well, I think he was just in the bathroom. They're like, can we talk to him? Sure, go ahead and talk to him. So they pull me out in the hallway to tell me his hands are covered in red paint. Oh, my God. And they're like, um, the bathroom stall, the toilet. And all the walls are painted red. Oh, my God. Why are your hands red? <laughs> so he had taken his pass that he had done all year, his walk. And, and on this day, he decides to bring red paint from his house. And he painted with his hands the bathroom stall, the toilet, <laughs> and the walls. And what was his main punishment for doing something like that? Just a longer walk? <laughs> <laughs> They, they did, and, and I was surprised they got away with this, but his grandma was on board. That's who his primary guardian is. They had him clean it. He completely cleaned it all. Wow. He wiped off everything. He wiped it all off, and that was it. That was the only punishment. Look, the middle school I went to might have been a little rough, but I'll tell you what. They'd give you time, all right, time to pick up your teeth because they would not put up with that stuff. I mean – I remember getting paddled. You'd be speeding in the hallway, and if you screwed up, you would get the jerk and swat right there in the hallway with people walking around you. They would, didn't even care, and we had a lot yeah. less uh, we had a lot less malfeasance from the children. But it didn't always stop me. I'll be honest. There, there was another case. Now this this happened in my my second year of teaching. And this goes back to the kids that you just wish you don't have in your classroom because they, they they're they there. Maybe some teachers don't admit, but there are just some kids you just can't get along. It's like people. There's just some people in the world you just can't get along with. But my second year of teaching, um, and I taught in a school in the city and uh, had about – I had about 30 kids in that classroom. So it was a very large classroom, and it was very diverse. So I had, um, you know, uh, Latino children. I had 
uh, black children. I had obviously white children. And then we had Russians that year. Don't ask me where they came from. <laughs> I was going to say, is that, the, is that the crop for Russians that year? <laughs> I, I have no idea. Um, but there was a family of Russians and um, they were, it was like sets of cousins. So I think we had uh, five of them total. And anyways, on the playground one day, one of the kids decides he's going to teach the Russian kid how to say cuss words. Hmm. Nice. All right. So, so the Russian kid is proceeding to go around with this kid and calling people bad words and everything else and actually walks right up to me and calls me a bad word. And I'm like, give them this look and like scolding them and they have no idea. Like they have no idea. <laughs> that they're saying anything bad. And um, I'm like, you know, where are you hearing this from? And they told me exactly where it came from. And I know exactly who this kid is. And I go over to him and I'm on him and he's out of recess. Now, this is my second year. You could be a little harder. And plus, I was young and I didn't realize that I could get in trouble for things I said. <laughs> so I'm scolding this kid. I'm like, what are you thinking? You're out of recess. You're out of recess tomorrow. You're out of recess the next day. You know, I'm calling your your mom and dad. You're in big trouble. All right. So we go in back inside and, you know, I'm walking kids into the hallway and I got kids milling around. There's 30 kids in this room. I'm checking on everybody, making sure everybody's back in the room. And somebody had brought me a cupcake. All right. Somebody had brought me a chocolate cupcake with peanut butter icing, my absolute favorite. And I get the kids working, they're doing some work, and I go over by my desk, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to eat, I'm going to enjoy this cupcake. So I pick the cupcake up off my desk, I peel the wrapper off, and I hadn't really looked at it. I put, go to take the first bite, and I get this smell. I'm like, what is that? Oh, no. And I look back. He had taken the pencil shavings <laughs> out of the <laughs> pencil shaver, and Topped my cupcake with it. Oh my gosh. That's pretty ballsy. And I lost it. I lost it. I started ranting <laughs> and saying, who would ruin a chocolate and peanut butter cupcake? And and this kid, he tried to disappear. He slid down in his bed. He was crying. And I was just on a I'm like Oh, wow, we know who did it. We know who ruined the cupcake. And I mean, I went, I went off. And so the weird thing was, I mean, he got a punishment. I, don't, I can't really recall exactly what it was, but I do remember this. In the fifth grade in our county, we have an outdoor school. And fifth graders go to the outdoor school and they spend the night. And they spend the night for three nights. So as a teacher, I have to go and sleep in this cabin with them. And there's bunk beds in there and restrooms. And I have to sleep in there with them for three nights. And I, I went to the principal and I said, there's no way that kid is sleeping in a room with me. Not happening. And they did. They stood their ground and he was not allowed to spend the night. All right. I got to back you up. Chris and I looked at each other when you said this. Did you say outdoor school? Yes, sir. Outdoor school. So it is a it is a camp. They have dorms. They have a mess hall there. And the kids go and they learn environmental science, life science. Wow. I can I mean, now I say this, uh, I can't imagine having a bunch of kids that you're going to be doing sleepovers and not have it just evolve into Lord of the Flies. But I mean, when I think back at my middle school, that wasn't fifth grade, but it was eighth grade. They were taking kids you know, to Europe in eighth grade. And the parents had to sign off on the fact that you know, they, they might have alcohol and they weren't going to stop them, which I thought was kind of wild, but I've never experienced a, a sleepover uh, you know, multiple days. Now, my wife took the kids one time to Kosai to spend the night. And, um, but naturally, because I don't even know what school my kids go to, I wasn't involved. 
but <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. But I, I don't, I couldn't imagine having like a, an organized class at an outdoor school for multiple days. I mean, that had to have gotten out of hand from time to time, right? Like pranks in the evening when they're trying to sleep. Well, there have it has been, yeah, and it's a, it's really evolved with the times, obviously, because in fact, at one point, they used to take high school counselors. Um, but that ended when one of the girls was trying to teach the boys how to French kiss. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. That'll end that. <laughs> Lucky boy, though. Right. <laughs> right. Um, but it has evolved throughout. Like now, um, it used to be you know, when I first went there. You know, the first couple of years I did this, you as a teacher would have your class in a dorm. Your room is in the middle and then on each side and separate. The only way to get to the other side would be go to the teacher's room. There would be boys on one side and girls on the other side. And there was boys restrooms and showers on their side and girls restrooms and showers. Uh, and that was always tricky because as a male teacher, oh, yeah. right. you know, I'm trying to filter in, in, in and out and making sure I don't you know, see anything in the girl's side and they're running around and the boys are trying to peek across and the girls are trying to peek across. And now they've changed it where all the boys are in a dorm, all the gr- girls are in a, well, not a dorm, but like a cabin. And then you have chaperones that go with you. And now with the chaperones, you can't leave chaperones alone with kids. They have to be in pairs so that a kid can't come back and accuse right. the right. chaperone. Yeah. Something. They have to have another one. So it, it's evolved, but um, there have been, uh, underwear grew up the flagpole. Oh yeah. That's a good one. Um, there has been, um, you know, taco night. You can only imagine what that sounds like in a dorm with 20 boys. <laughs> um, some of the men chaperone, uh, are there with their CPAP machines. <laughs> um, they, those uh, kids didn't need snore. to sleep anyway. Yeah. They, they rival our buddy Adam with their snoring. Um, <laughs> And so that, that makes it challenging. But the, the, the one moment, the one time, there's an alarm system on the door. So at about 10 o'clock every night, the janitor comes around, locks the door, sets the alarm. Um, well, one night I had a parent decide that they just wanted to leave in the middle of the night. So they open the door and this alarm goes off. And I'm, I'm not kidding you. This alarm would bring you out of the grave. <laughs> it's so loud and everybody is screaming and running around and it was just total chaos. I like it. <laughs> yeah, it was nuts. Well, you know, since you brought up pranks, um, <clears throat> you and I, <laughs> you've known each, we've known each other for, for a while and you may know that I, I may have, um, I don't know, an unhealthy idea of pranking people. And I may or may not buy fireworks on occasion. Yeah. So I do know that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, in the past when we get together, you know, I'd have some fireworks and we have fun with them. Years ago when my kid was in grade school, <clears throat> he was in fifth grade. So you, you should get this. All Year, right. Years ago, my wife calls me at work and says, she, she's a little, little wound up. She goes, listen, you're taking care of this. I said, what are you talking about? The school just called. I said, all right, well, what's going on? Your son, it was my son at this point, your son, yeah, your son was lighting fireworks on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm like, oh, gosh, now I've really stepped in it, right? Because if this kid picked out fireworks from some stash I had hidden in my house, this is going to be hard to explain. So, right. you know, Kim is just like, I told you this is a bad idea. Having that stuff around the house where little kids can get to it and blah, blah, blah. All right, I'll, I'll call. So I end up calling the school back because I think she was originally just like, stop right there. Don't talk to me. You got to talk to his father. <laughs> so <laughs> I call back and the lady was really nice. She said, yeah, you know, uh, today on the bus, uh, Luke let off a firework. And I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm hearing this. And I said, well, can, can you tell me what happened? She goes, well, yeah, I mean, it was distracting to the bus driver. And I said, well, yeah, the ones I have certainly would be. So what, what happened? Well, as she's talking more and more, and she talks about cleaning things up, I realize she's not talking about a firecracker. She's talking about a party popper. You know, those little things, they're, 
you know, about the size of a D-sized battery and you pull the little string and a confetti comes out of it? Yeah. That's what she's talking about. And I went from being like so angry at Luke because he lit off a firework to being so angry because it was only a party popper. I wished he would have had a firework because it would have been a much better story later on. Right, if he was lighting off Roman candles in the back of the bus or something. <laughs> I would have had pride. And they were bouncing off. <laughs> yeah, that would have right. been a moment of pride as long as nobody lost an eye. Um, yeah, he did get suspended for one day. Um but I thought that was even kind of weak. Like, really? That was a suspension for a party popper? Right. Uh, so do you do you ever... Kinda, Go ahead. I was going to say, it kinda, it's kind of funny to think I was going to piggyback on what you said about kids getting things from home that, you know, that, and bringing in the school. There's been a couple occasions where I've had some kids bring in some inappropriate things. For example, I had a kid, and I just saw this kid the other day. He's like, 21 years old now and I was like remember the time you did this and he's like oh yeah so he brought in this pen you gotta love this he brought in this pen and it was a clicky pen and when you clicked it was a girl on it and she's wearing a bikini and when you clicked it she was naked I know the pen well (laughs) (laughs) so he's walking around clicking this pen and showing everybody you know and um we finally, it was finally like, what? And, and lunch, I remember it was in lunch. Finally, it was like, dude, I have watched you all day with this pen. What is the obsession with the clicky pen? So I go over and he hands it to me and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I can see why everybody's been smiling all day. I mean, but um, the, the, the parent reaction though was priceless. Call mom. She goes, oh, yeah, that's my husband. She's like, his name, I'm not going to say his name, but he's like, so-and-so is just really interested in that stuff right now, you know, and he's just getting to that age. I'm like, he's 10. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't thinking about that at 10, but. Did you have um, to confiscate that pen? Is it your property now? You still have it? Yeah. I had to take the (laughs) pen. I do not still have it. (laughs) I have moved classrooms a few times, so I guess it's been misplaced. <laughs> but um, another case was I had a, I had a kid one year that was – he brought a book in from home, and he's reading this book. Now, first of all, the kid did not read on a fifth grade level. So he couldn't – luckily, he couldn't read this book. Um, but I see him reading this book, and it's a huge novel, and I'm like, what is he reading? You know, and I'm like, I know he's not that good of a reader. That seems like a challenging book for him. So I wrote this book, and here he's got like this romance novel. <laughs> and so at I least he can at, read. Well, he can't read it. I'm pretty sure he couldn't. But I look and read the page, and I mean, it was very graphic. It was like very graphical. You know, just just describing the whole steamy situation. <laughs> and I was like. Uh, where'd you get this at? Oh, it's my mom's. I'm like, right. okay, oh, yeah? you need to take it back there. So yeah. well, that has uh, happened on a few occasions. Now, I, I told you I went to a rough middle school. And the guy I'm about to talk about, I think Chris knows him, but his name was Todd. And, you know, when I went to this middle school, I came from kind of a, it, it wasn't a bad area. It wasn't super wealthy or anything, but it was a nice area. And we bust in like three groups of people across the city into this school. And I'll never forget in sixth grade, this kid, Todd, sporting his members only jacket, runs to, <laughs> runs to the back of the room where we would sit and just cause trouble. And he, he, he's got his jacket pulled tight and he says, oh, my God, I'm going to get in so much trouble. I'm going to get in so much trouble. I said, why? And he opened up his members only jacket on one side and he had, and mind you, this is sixth grade. He had a freezer bag full of pot. In the sixth grade. In the sixth grade. Now, because, you know, my parents were much older, I don't, they they didn't do pot. They didn't do anything like that. I said, what's that? And he goes, it's weed. And I said, whose is it? And he said, it's my dad's. (laughs) (laughs) And I said, well, what are you going to do with it? And he looked at me like I was crazy. He was like, I'm going to smoke it. 
sixth grade. Sixth grade. And if you want to talk about, you know, bringing things uh, home or bringing things to school from home that aren't yours, he actually pulled out rolling papers, rolled a joint in the back of his class, lit it, took a big hit off of it, and then put the joint out on his desk and put the weed in his pocket. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, God, this is where my parents are going to kill me because I'm even associated with this kid. The teacher never said a word. Just let it go. Wow. Yeah. And what year is this? Uh, 1923. <laughs> 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 I don't know what year that be. 80, 84, 80, no, 80, 80, probably two? like around 81 or so. 81, 82, 82 something I mean, like that. Right now in public school system, uh, a big issue right now is the uh, vape pens. And, oh, sure. you know, if something like that happened nowadays. It wouldn't be so shocking. In fact, um, at our local high school, my you know my my kids are in high school now, both of them, um, and one of the big things going on in the high school is kids are vaping in class. Um, they tuck it up in their sleeve of their hoodie, they pull their hoodie up over their head, and then they just bend down and they take it, you know, hit off the the vape pen right there. What about the exhale? I guess they just exhale down in their shirt. Okay. It's just like this big cloud coming out of their shirt. But when you think about we've it. Had, and we've had cases now. they have been cases where they've been lined with fentanyl. Oh, yeah. And we've had some kids taken out in the ambulance. Oh, that's awful. This happened like right in the public school, right in the classroom. Kids having a reaction right there. That's some scary stuff. And, and you know, we've always had this kind of thing. Um, I don't know if you remember this, uh, but I think you might be a little bit younger than me. But there used to be uh, skull bandits. That was like the big thing where it was just instead of like dumping a bunch of chew in your mouth, these things, you know, were packaged. And I don't know, they're like the size of a nickel or a dime. And you just put them in between your cheek and your gum. And people would do that when I was in high school. And it was disgusting. And every now and then somebody would swallow something and have to go and puke. But it seems like a lot of these companies must just market to, you know, stupid kids. Yeah. And, and you know, you're supposed to be 21 to be able to buy vaping supplies. And, you know, basically in our school, they're just, they say, well, vaping's legal. We can't really stop them. It's not legal if you're 16. But Right. So I wanted to ask a question because, you know, I always try to do a little research before we um, – before we have any kind of podcast and there's a lot of funny stories out there just kind of out of the mouths of babes where kids will say things. And I have a funny story that happened to my wife and I don't know why I just thought this was so funny because my wife will go and volunteer for things. She's so nice to these kids. Uh, I can tell you about the time I volunteered and it was awful, but she is there all the time volunteering and she told me one day when she was volunteering, there was a little kid from the neighborhood who was sitting next to her. And she's talking to him, and finally he just kind of looks up at her and he goes, you have fangs. <laughs> <laughs> so evidently he, looked, he was looking at her eye tooth from the side and said, you have fangs. And I thought, oh, that's just brilliant. I mean, kids will just say anything that comes out of their mouth. Do you have any recollections of uh, weird things that have been said to you? Um. Nothing really pops into my mind, but just like people, the kids will ask you like any question at all, you know, any question at all. How old are you? Stuff like that, you know, very personal questions. But as far as saying anything like that, I've never had anybody say anything that was that strange. Now, I've had kids do things that were like strange. Like I had a kid uh, slap me on the butt. <laughs> you had time. it coming, dude. <laughs> I was walking I was walking by her in the hallway and she just slapped me on the butt like good game type of slap, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, whoa. And I turn around, I'm like, uh, you can't do that. <laughs> she and, said, um, way I to felt, teach out it there. Was very awkward. Yeah. It was an awkward feeling. So I I kinda I didn't know what to do about it, but I went to I went and talked to um like the school counselor who <laughs> most you know, felt a little violated. So I talked to the school counselor <laughs> and I'm like, you know, can we explain to her? The, the girl had some uh, learning disabilities 
and you know didn't really understand that most likely probably saw her mom do it to her dad or right. the other way around and you know just gave me a big tap on the butt there um but I, kids will notice the littlest things like um if if you grow a mustache and you never had a mustache it's like oh, you got a mustache oh i like your mustache <laughs> oh you got a haircut you know things like that but never said anything too awkward so um you know when you talk about some of these kids and how things have changed over time I, I i know you're kind of in more of a rural area but do you have to put up with any of the stuff that's going on like the woke stuff either through parents or the administration or anything like that because of course the news always portrays a lot of stories and you know it's not the stories that you're gonna it's not happening all over the place but they'll get that one weird ass story where you know, they're letting some kid act like a cat or something like that, where it may happen in one place with a crazy teacher. Do you have any kind of weird stuff like that in, in your administration? I had a child come in and ask if they could wear cat ears and a cat tail. Okay, so this is real. Oh, this yeah. This is actually going yeah. on in my neighborhood schools. They're letting them wear this stuff. <laughs> so it's interesting. It's kind of a fine line because... Um, it's one of those pick and choose your battles. Right. Do I, do I pick this battle with this child and, you know, this go social, this go to the media and then I'm getting all these questions. So, um, it was just, it was a, like a headpiece. Um, what would you call it? I guess I'm not very good with the girl lingo, but not a bandana, but like a, like a headband kind of thing. Headband, but it had cat ears on it. Chris has and it was a, Okay, Chris knows what I'm talking <laughs> right, about. Right, of then. course. And then there was a tail, and the tail you just tied around your waist. And so she said, you know, can I, can I wear my cat tail and cat ears? I said, well, what do you mean by that? Can you show me what you mean? And she pulls out the hair piece, and literally the ears only stuck up about, I don't know, an inch and a half, two inches. And it didn't look any different than – any other kind of headband. So I'm right. like, sure, that would be fine. And she says, well, what about the tail? I'm like, well, let me see the tail. And now the tail was pretty big and bushy. <laughs> and I just, I was kind of like, okay, <laughs> how do I handle this? So I just said, well, I tell you what, if you can sit at your seat with that on and it doesn't bother your neighbor and it doesn't bother you from trying to do your activities today and learn, then, then I'm fine with it. Right. And so she did. And when she left my room, I just said to her nicely, I'm like, can you please take that off now while you go to, like, our kids go out of our room to go to specials, music, art, right, PE, media. I said, can you take it off for that, and then you can put it back on. Sure, she said. So it wasn't a big deal. I'm not right. sure. Like, fifth graders aren't into that identity thing yet, I don't no, think. No, I don't think so. Well, I don't know. At least probably not around us. But I have to tell you, I, I believe – that a lot of this stuff, it's just, it's power games. And even in fifth grade, if they feel like they can do something and get away with it, they'll try it. But I think the approach that you just go, all right, whatever. So you want to wear a cat thing? Whatever. Because then the next day, I mean, how long did she wear that? One day. She exactly. never has come back. <laughs> Knock on wood. But she has not come back with it. It yeah. hasn't, hasn't been an issue. So I feel like I probably dodged a bullet there. If yeah. I make it a big deal... Then maybe I get a phone call. Then maybe I get the parent who's like, wear it every day now. We'll show him. You know, right. so I'm just like, eh, no big deal. But I will say, you know, again, my daughter's in high school. And there's a girl in her class that has gone as far as to legally change her name and classifies as an animal. Wow. Well, I mean, you know, this stuff happens, and, and I think that everything kind of becomes cyclical. And um, it, it is kind of funny. The fact that you're seeing it, it, it you're probably pro not going to have it as long, though, because I think everything, again, being cyclical. And we don't wear bell bottoms anymore either, and I've seen them come and go twice. So I think everything's going to come <laughs> around. So I, I did have another question because we were talking about some of the bad kids, and I was certainly one of them. Do you... In, in, because you've got this long runway that you've had a lot of kids come through your school, 
were there any bad kids you just knew you were going to see on the news and you, they just were just bad and it turned out exactly the way you thought? Unfortunately, yes. Um, luckily, again, since where I'm at and the kind of population we have, it's a small number, but um, I do have a former student who is doing time for murder. Oh, my gosh. Um, was a kid who was did not follow rules, was very active in school, um, had to be, you know, taken out of recess several times for just physical behavior. Wow. So that's a case where that has happened. Yeah. So let me ask you the flip side of that. The flip side of that coin is have there ever been any kids where you're like, Oh my gosh, what a troublemaker. Uh, I'm going to see this person on the news. And it turns out that uh, they actually turned out very well. Yeah. Yep. Same cases. Um, uh, Several kids that have gone into the military and made a good life in the military went in the military, uh, used that military to go get a college degree. Um, I have kids that have become doctors, uh, kids that are lawyers. So those success stories are great. And then that's the whole reason you get into teaching, you know, to try to hopefully uh, motivate kids to grow up and be a beneficial part of society. Yeah. But, you know, I've taught hundreds of kids. So obviously, you know, sometimes you're going to lose a few of those battles. Oh, of course. Yeah. The law of averages. I know uh, I was kind of wild when I was in school and I've had teachers that have seen me, I don't know, even in the past 30 years, they're like, oh, you turned out good. I think they suspected that I was going to be, you know, one of those people on the news. Um, but yeah, it, it's just amazing that, you know, kids, they are just in their environment Sometimes it's, you know, what, what they're growing up in. Uh, sometimes they're just naturally wild. I mean, that guy Todd <laughs> stealing his dad's weed. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that goes on. But uh, I can tell you, I had most, uh, some of my best fun in school was middle school. Like right after that fifth grade, you go to middle school, you've got three years before you're like a semi-adult going into high school. Those were great times and doing pranks and getting in trouble as as much as you want to think like uh, these kids are bad seeds, I can tell you that it, it was one of those things. I'm sure that there are some principals that are til- still telling stories about stuff that I did, and uh, they'd probably be surprised that I'm around. But you know, just keep in mind, some of those kids are still good. Right. Absolutely. I I I guess that's why, like I said, when I tell my mom stories, she's like, "You deserve it." And there's things that kids <laughs> will do. Kids will do things in school, and I'll start to like. I can't believe, and then I'm like, wait a second, you can't use them for that. You did that. Right. You know, you stood up in school one day in the middle of class and threw a paper wad across the room, not knowing that the teacher was sitting three desks in front of you and hit him in the back of the head. It I happens. It does happen. Yeah. yeah so well, I kind of don't get, I catch myself being like, oh, well, you can't make a huge deal out of this because you were, you were, you did it. You were kind of part of that. And I think that, you know, one thing, that when when I came out of college and got my first job, which I got my first job teaching, I had a long-term sub-job lined up before I graduated. I graduated in December on a Saturday, and on Monday I reported for a fifth-grade teaching job um, wow. at the school near where I went to college at, and I did that job for like three months for a teacher who was out with an illness. And, you know, some of the things that, I wasn't aware of that, you know, you, you're, you're a, you're not just a teacher, you know, you're a psychologist, a psychiatrist, um, a, a, a mom, a dad to some of these kids, you know, I've, I've done plumbing at school <laughs> because kids just plugged up the toilet. Oh yeah. So I've been a plumber, you know, a uh, referee for, for games and kids arguments. I'm, I feel like I'm a lawyer, a CSI. Yeah. Agent, you know, because it's constant. There's, it's more than just teaching kids. For in some cases, it's raising them. Oh yeah, I, I, teachers have a, a pivotal role. I mean, as I was growing up, um, honest to God, I, you, you might want to hold your ears on this, but there were probably only about five teachers that I thought really had an impact on me, and but they had a huge impact. You know, we had a teacher in middle school. This guy would 
tell us we could come to his house and, and play basketball at his house. So at any time, there'd be like 15 kids in his driveway and his wife out there serving, you know, lemonade and we're playing basketball at his house. I mean, he didn't need to do that. He just knew that we were kind of wild kids and, hey, he's going to rein us in. So there's a lot of good stories like that. So I'm, I'm glad you're in the profession. I know you're good for it. And I know that because you've done it for over 20 years. <laughs> so good for you, man. Yeah, thank you. It's been um, it's been a rewarding 22 years. There's days when you go home and you think, what am I doing? What else can I do? But there's a lot of days that you leave there like, okay, it was a good effort today. Kids did a good job. They tried hard. It was a good day. You know, we move on to the next day. And there's a lot of kids, you know, I've, like I 22 years, you build a lot of relationships. There's a lot of kids that I taught and coached because I've also done that for 20 years in the community. And there's a lot of kids that I keep in touch with. There's a lot of kids that I still see today at various events. Um, I've been to weddings, uh, you know, been to births, things like that. Um, you know, and you see a lot of kids and they, they remember things. They'll say, remember yeah. the time this happened or, Remember the time when you did this? I remember the time you jumped up on the table, you know, <laughs> things like that. Um, Cause you do know I'm very energetic. So yes, right. You, I can you imagine know what spontaneous thing might happen every now and then, but absolutely. Well, I think this is a fitting place for us to wrap this up. Thank you for all the work you do with the kids. And I need to ask Chris, what did we learn today? Yeah, I learned, um, don't slap your teacher on the butt. Oh, you, but you learned that before, didn't you? I, I have, but you might, you know, traumatize them a little bit. That's true. I learned that if the kid wants to dress like a cat, just let it happen for a day. They'll probably just grow tired of it in no time at all. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, thank you very much for joining us today, Corey. This is Scott McLaughlin. I'm Chris Kiernan. Saying, we'll, we'll see, see you at work. work. Thank you for listening to the Not in the Job Description podcast. If you have a story you'd like to share, or if you'd like to be a guest on our podcast, please let us know by sending us an email with a brief description of your story to stories at notinthejob.com.